It's going to take, unfortunately, several days. You know, it's not just, you know, one or two days, and then everything's cleaned up and we're done here. Of course, this was a widespread damaging wind event. And I mean, you know, akin to kind of looks like a hurricane happened out there. And that's, you know, the widespread nature of this squall line at 80, 90, near 100 mile an hour winds. It, you know, a lot of times when we're talking about tornadoes, that's over, you know, a, a small confined area. We had that in so many places around Tulsa and around northeastern Oklahoma that that's why the cleanup is just going to take such an extensive effort. We mentioned the cooling stations, but again, we're Reminder, there are several in the Tulsa Metro. Uh, you can see the list here on your screen. Then, and in addition, Reed Park and Lacey Park, those community centers, those kind of additions on top of the ones that are kind of the normal cooling stations you can go to. Most of these are 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., so more or less the daylight hours that you can go there and cool off, get some food and water, charge up your phone, your electronics if you're not able to do that at home. Uh, of course, you know, it, 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 the heat stress is going to be a real deal here over the next several days as the crews are working their tails off to get that power restored, but it's just, it's an extended effort. I mean, there have been improvements in some spots around McIntosh County, Pittsburgh County, still several hundred outages reported, but that's down from a few thousand yesterday. So there's been progress made. Muskogee County is about 2,500, and these are kind of rounded up, rounded down roughly here, but there's been progress made there. But I mean, Rogers County, Wagner County, still, you know, 8,000, 9,000 customers. Tulsa County, about 145,000 customers in the county still reported uh, big numbers out in Creek County as well. So there's still a long way to go, as you know, and you know, those crews are going to are, are working their tails off. But the, you know, they've got to be careful with the heat as well, just as you do. Some of the damage pictures, there have been a lot of them, of course, sharing as many as we can as we get them uh, from Magnum Printing. Jenna, the, at around 46 in the morning, you see the big roof damage there. Out of Keystone Lake, this picture shared by Holly, that's that Jellystone Park area where there was reports of a lot of these campers overturned. Some had people inside them when they overturned. Holly mentioned that folks that were inside this camper were okay, thankfully. A uh, picture from Pryor from Holly with tree damage on top of the roof there. Again, that's a common sight. Same in Prattville. You can see tree uh, on top of the house there. A lot of damage. I know, again, it's going to be a, a long cleanup effort, unfortunately. So storm chances. Uh, nothing during the day today. It's just going to be heat to deal with. Late tonight, extreme southeastern Oklahoma. There's a small window, small chance for an isolated shower or storm or two that could be strong to severe, and we'll highlight that on the future in just a moment. Again, that's mostly closer to the Red River. Highs today, low 90s, southeast Kansas, northeastern Oklahoma, southeastern Oklahoma. Uh, again, not too far off what's considered normal for this time of year, but as we've been mentioning, you tack on the fact that a lot of folks won't have air conditioning. That's really going to cause some problems, so about 93 for a high, already mid-80s at lunchtime. Here's a statewide view, so you can see with the storms flare up late tonight, overnight hours. So, McAllister down to, you know, Stewart, Kiowa, and then Wilberton, Tallahena. There's a chance you could have a storm or two nearby overnight. Those should sink pretty south, uh, pretty quickly south towards the Red River. River uh, to the morning hours. Uh, Tuesday, more heat. As we head into Wednesday and Thursday, we'll start to see better shower and storm chances across western Oklahoma and western Kansas. More than likely, though, that's where those are going to stay, and our chances here in eastern Oklahoma stay pretty minimal. So, again, on the seven day forecast on this Juneteenth Monday, a lot of sunshine, light winds. Take it easy with the heat. Again, if uh, you have access to air conditioning, you have family and friends that don't, you know, maybe try to help them out as much as you can because it's going to be a rough go for folks that don't have AC today. Uh, mid 90s, Tuesday into Wednesday. Wednesday Day. That's the summer solstice. Thursday, there's a slight chance of a storm or two nearby as we head into the late week time frame.